I'm going to cover how to remove sensitive information from prompts before you send those prompts to a third party LLM. This is something that can be useful if you really care about privacy and want to avoid anything that's extremely sensitive going to those third parties like OpenAI, for example, or Anthropic. Now, there are two ways I'll go through doing this. The first is with named entity recognition. It uses really small neural networks and also pattern matching to extract things like names, phone numbers, credit card numbers, replace those with fakes, send them to the LLM, and then when the response comes back, try to sub them out. I'll also go through a second approach, which just uses a larger but still small model that you can run locally, Phi3. And here, using structured generation, I'm going to have the model extract into JSON format the words that are potentially sensitive and need to be replaced. Now, just as a sneak preview, let's take a look at the first example here. Jane's email is jane.doe and her birthday is 1992. So this text will be anonymized. So that means replacing the keywords like her name, email, and address with fake versions, sending that version into the LLM. In this case, I'm just asking the LLM to rewrite that information a little differently. And then I get the response from the LLM and I try to reverse it back. Now notice how the reversal works well uh, for the name and it works well for email, but we do have some issues here around the date, which is difficult to reverse in some cases, just using simple named entity recognition techniques. The second approach uh, is using a Phi3 language model. So let's take a look at how those results come out. We have an initial prompt here uh, with the same birthday, the anonymized text, it's got different fake names here. Then we have the rewritten response from uh, a language model. This would be your third party language model. And then we have the reversal. And you can see in this case, the reversal is actually uh, correct. So it's getting right back to the same information as at the start. So let me now go through in much more detail the different approaches at a high level if you want to encrypt data or avoid sensitive data getting into third parties. And let me talk about the different techniques and the pros and cons of using those. So for a quick overview of this video, let's take a look at the agenda. First off, I'll talk about approaches to privacy. Uh, just doing this data anonymization is not the only approach. So let me talk about that. I'll then talk about the pipeline, which I just demonstrated, the different steps of anonymizing, sending to the LLM, getting back the responses, and then replacing to get back to the original information. I'll talk about anonymization methods named entity recognition, where you use a really small neural network in order to do um, entity extraction. I'll talk about pattern matching and then the LLM-based approach where I use Phi3. I'll go through the notebook examples in more detail. And last of all, I'll uh, build on those examples, just give you some tips on how you might implement this further in practice. And the notebook, by the way, will be part of, it's already part of the advanced inference repo. You can find that on trelis.com forward slash advanced dash inference. So the first of three approaches, and maybe there are more, if you want to be very careful about privacy is you can just send your requests to a third party like OpenAI. Now, a lot of these parties really have high level of security. They offer um, things like SOC 2 compliance. And I think the question you have to ask is, if you're comparing that to running everything locally, which is hard and expensive, is your local setup really going to be more secure than what Microsoft are able to do? And I think in a lot of cases, probably the answer is no. Because keep in mind that when you do send prompts over to OpenAI, these are going to be encrypted on your side. Now they are decrypted on the OpenAI side when they're sent to the LLM and the responses are going to be in plain text form, but then encrypted before being sent back to you. Um, so you have encryption when the information is moving along the pipe the risk is going to be at the other end, do OpenAI have good security? And as I said, because they do have these really high standards that are hard to put in place, they may well have higher security than what you could achieve with your own system. So with that uh, caveat that maybe what you're doing is already not a bad approach, you can consider option two, which is to run a local LLM. And here, for example, if you have a Mac with an M1, 2 or 3 chip, you can run a GGUF model maybe Phi3, uh, the mini model, it's about seven gigabytes of, uh, of RAM. So you can fit it into most Macs with an M1. 
And that's going to give reasonable performance, but it's certainly not going to be as good as Opus or GPT-4. So the big limit of running locally is that it's just really hard to get the same performance and quality. You could, of course, uh, run locally by buying a graphics card like an RTX 4090, or you could um, rent a GPU. This will avoid uh, your data going to a company like OpenAI or Anthropic, but this isn't even um, a local approach because you are sending the data then into some service like RunPod or AWS and have to think about the data security there. So that brings us to the third possible approach, which is maybe somewhat between these two approaches, although it can kind of benefit from the best of both worlds. You get the high quality enterprise security, um, but you redact information first. And quite simply, you'll start off with some prompt that has sensitive information, maybe about Billy and his phone number, and you replace that with a fake value so that when you send this request into the language model, the language model will still have good context. You see, if you just put in placeholders, um, this can kind of mess up the meaning and you might find that the response you get back from the language model is not exactly as good quality as if you'd left in the original info. So yeah, putting in good fake names is one way to get good performance from the language model. And ideally, on the other end, you're able to reverse that process and get back to an answer where any relevant uh, anonymized information is correctly reversed back to what you had originally. So there are a few methods if you want to do this uh, anonymization. One of those methods is called named entity recognition. And there are uh, there's a suite of models that is designed for doing this. Let's take a quick look at uh, the Spacey family. And there's uh, there are kind of two main models here. There's EN, English, Core Web, Large, and then there's Small, SM. Now, these are available, I believe, in a few other languages, definitely Spanish. So just be aware that if you're working in a different language, you will need to use uh, another model. So if you take a look at the files here, this uh, it's actually one repo, but many different things within that repo. So for example, there's um, a tool for tagging here for converting from tokens to vectors. Um, there's a lemmatizer here. So that would, for example, switch from a word running into run. So there are all kinds of tools here. One of the key tools is uh, NEOR, named entity recognition. And you can see it's really quite a small model, only six uh, megabytes. And what this model does is it's been fine-tuned, or not fine-tuned, it's been trained in order to detect entities of different types. For example, name, uh, for example, phone number, um, credit card number. These are different examples of entities. And it's trained basically as a classifier to detect within a sentence, not just what named entities are in there, but what characters that entity will take. So if you have the word Ronan, then, uh, and Ronan is maybe in the sixth character until the 10th, this model will return Ronan as a name, and it will say Ronan is taking up from six until 10 in character positions along that sentence. So this is a tool that allows us to extract uh, which named entities are included. And once we can extract them, then we can decide to swap them out as we wish. Now I'll talk a bit about how you swap them out for fake values. We're going to use a package called Faker, F-A-K-E-R, and that simply generates fake versions of phone numbers, names, that you can use to replace. Now, a second method here is just simple pat pattern matching. If you have um, structured information like phone numbers or credit cards, they follow a very specific type of syntax. And using regex type extraction, you can quite simply match those and pull them out. And this is uh, generally going to be really accurate, um, whereas the named entity recognition may in some cases miss names or it may uh, miss other attributes. But yeah, pattern matching is going to be pretty exact because it is an exact tool, except in the case where you have some typos. If you have typos in the data, like the phone number, there's an A that gets mixed in there, that might uh, cause things to get thrown off a little bit. Although there are techniques where you can use fuzzy kinds of matching to get around small amounts of errors. Now, the last method uh, you can use is just focus on having a, a larger, albeit small, language model like Phi3. And the key to making this work is to use structured generation. If you just prompt it to extract the data, you won't get the consistency. You may not even get the performance, actually. 
if you just prompt it to extract information in a certain format, it's critical that you constrain the output using a library like outlines. And what outlines will do is it will basically in the response, force the LLM to respond with this uh, curly brace to respond then with uh, these apostrophes. And then it will allow the language model to generate only the text. So it basically constrains what the language model can generate in all of uh, these positions here of the JSON. And it will then allow the language model to just give uh, the strings that are required. And this um, not just makes the response reproducible, but it also actually improves the performance. And that's pretty important because sometimes the small models are just not strong enough to do named ent or to do entity extraction. I've shown a video before with data extraction. I think I was using a 34B model. It was a fine tune of the Yi 34B model called Smog. And that performed well. But here, the amazing thing is that using just, I think it's around a three, three and a half billion parameter model, um, I'm actually able to get pretty good performance on entity extraction. So let's talk about the libraries that I'll be using for each of the approaches. Um, in the named entity recognition approach, I'm going to use Presidio. Presidio is basically a wrapper that incorporates a number of tools, including the Spacey model. It's developed by Microsoft. And then, as I mentioned, I'll use Faker in order to generate fake names, uh, phone numbers. Now for outlines, um, sorry, outlines is the package I'm going to use in combination with the Phi3 model, which is seven and a half gigabytes in size. And this is the way that I'm going to use the language model to extract and then replace back in the correct words. Now there's a certain, um, there's a certain benefit I should emphasize to the second approach here using a language model. And that benefit is around the de-anonymization. When you're going to reverse the anonymization in the first approach, you're literally going to try and check for the anonymized words, like say John is, or Billy is replaced with say John you're going to try search for John and switch it back to Billy. But the problem is if John appears in a slightly different format, like maybe John with a surname, John Biller or John Marks or whatever, that's not necessarily going to be easy to swap back out uh, to Billy. Whereas if you're using a language model, you can use the language model to do those swaps at the end. And of course, the language model is more fluidly able to recognize what to swap out and how. That will become more clear when we go through the example. Just before we do, a few quick notes on performance. If you use a structured uh, data approach, so I'm talking about removing sensitive data that has a very clean structure, this is going to be fast. You can use Presidio library. It's also going to be quite reliable, uh, except if you have maybe some typos within your input data. By contrast, if you are trying to extract moderately structured data like names, which can be in different forms, first name, surname, or addresses. Um, this is going to be fast, but it can be somewhat unreliable if you're just relying on named entity recognition. In particular, reversing the anonymization can be tricky. The other option you have for moderately structured data is you can use um, the slower, albeit perhaps more reliable approach of a language model with structured responses in order to extract that sensitive information. So we'll jump over now and take a look at both of these approaches step by step in the notebook. Okay, so two parts we're gonna go through. First, using Presidio anonymization. Here, the techniques for extracting the sensitive data include direct matching, like re rejects, uh, context matching, like using the tiny spacey model. And then the second approach is the local LLM-based anonymization, where we'll use Phi3 with structured generation uh, from outlines. Okay, so Within the Presidio approach, I'm going to do this uh, twice. The first time I'll do it just showing entity extraction and anonymization. And then I'll do it again, where I do entity extraction, anonymization, processing, and then reversal of the extraction. So to get started, um, we're going to install here uh, Presidio. So I've run this cell. And I'm going to define an initial sentence that we want to anonymize and send to the language model. So Jane with her email and her birthday right here. Now with that run, I'm going to set up an analyzer. The analyzer is a wrapper around a series of tools that include rejects extraction, that include using the spacey model for entity recognition. 
So we'll run that cell. And we're going to use this analyzer to analyze the text. And we'll tell the analyzer that our language is English. And we'll ask it to remove these entities here, uh, phone number. Now, if I uncomment this, it's just going to remove all of the entities that it can. Alternatively, I could list other entities here like name um, or various entities like credit card. In fact, you can check a list of those entities on this page here, which I'll copy into the notebook. For example, you have credit card, which is determined via pattern match and checksum. Checksum uh, just checks that the numbers follow a pattern required for credit cards. Uh, date, time, pattern match, and context. So you can see date, time also makes use of uh, one of the spacey small neural networks. Uh, email address, pattern match, context, and then uh, this validation here. So a whole range of entities. You'll notice that there are ones that are region specific, like social security number for the US, an NHS number for the UK, um, etc. And you can also generate your own custom uh, named entities if you like to. So we're going to analyze uh, just on extracting everything possible. So when you run this cell, it's going to extract a few things, the email address, the date, time, the person, and uh, the URL. Now notice how for each entity extracted, it tells us the start character and the end character, and also kind of a score of confidence in that being an actual uh, entity like URL. So with that, uh, we'll move on to replacement. And really what replacement does, you could write the Python code yourself. It just takes this information on the extraction and then it uses those positions to pull out that information. Except this wrapper will have the ability to replace with certain default strings that are just often um, with sharp brackets and then something like name or person or credit card number. Or you can define a custom replacement where you put in fake information. And that's what we're going to do here with Faker. So we'll install Faker, and we're going to set up an operator that will generate a fake name uh, that can replace any names in the text. So here, we're setting up an operator for person entity, and it's going to apply the fake name function that we've defined here. Now, notice how I've set a seed for this function. This just means that the fake name will be the same every time I run this. Uh, if you're going to run in production, you want to turn off the seed so that you just have randomness in the fake name that's been generated. So with that, we're going to apply the anonymization engine, which really just means that it's taking in the text uh, and the information on where the entities are. And then it's doing some simple extraction based on that information, which is all um, formulaic. And it's going to replace any of the person entities with a fake name. Now, it won't replace any of the other extracted entities with fake uh, values because we haven't set that up. So you can see the original text here on Jane's email. Jane is replaced with Alison Hill, whereas the email and her birthday are replaced with placeholders because we haven't defined replacement functions. So this is how you can anonymize your text. And in some cases, that will be sufficient. You anonymize it, you send it into the language model, you get back whatever uh, analysis you need, and maybe you're done. But in other cases, when the information comes back, you may want to replace back in the names, the credit card numbers, or the phone numbers. So let's go through an example where we go end to end, anonymizing, processing, and then on the way back, replacing back in the original values. Now, the tricky th thing, of course, is that you don't know exactly how the language model will process the information. So it might kind of tweak things in a way that makes the replacement difficult. And that's where you'll see a difference in the performance of um, a more exact match de-anonymization versus using a language model to do the de-anonymization as we will do later. So for the reversible anonymization, we're going to use the Presidio analyzer, but we're actually going to use a custom anonymizer. So what I mean there is when we get the information from Presidio on where the entities are and what the entities are, we're going to use that to just manually, with some manual code or custom code rather, extract those entities. Then we're going to define some fake names and we're going to have a mapping between the fake names and the originals. And that mapping will allow us to reverse the um, transformation when we get back information from the language model. So. Let's uh, make sure we've imported everything. 
set up Faker for English, US, or you can set UK. I don't know if it allows Ireland, Irish English, unfortunately. Then we're going to add in three entities to be faked. So um, internet, which is for URLs, uh, emails, person, and date time. And we will then initiate our analyzer. And now we're going to define that custom anonymization function. So there are basically what this function is doing is replacing. It's taking in the information from the analyzer results. It's taking in the text that needs to be anonymized and it's simply doing those replacements. So you can see here, for example, the original value is basically the result going from the start point to the end. And that's then the fake value is set up using the replacement function. And so we have uh, this happening for three entities. I'm just going to focus on the email address, the person, and the date time. So these are the only things that we're going to consider sensitive. And when we run this anonymized text function, we'll get back updated text, which will have the values replaced. But importantly, we'll get back a mapping between the original and faked values, which is needed when we want to reverse things later. And indeed, because we have that entity mapping, we have a short custom de-anonymization function where you take in anonymized text, you take in the mapping, and then basically it's just going to replace the fake values with the real values. And you can see a little bit here why this may not be fully robust, because it's going to search for the fake values that were defined before we process the prompt. But depending on how the prompt is processed, those fake values might be transformed. Like Bobby, uh, Bobby Kennedy might just end up being Bob or Kennedy. And that is not going to be as easy to replace on the reversal, which we'll see a bit later. So let's run through this pipeline with the same example. And uh, let's analyze those results. So we have text entities and then language. So here um, I'm just setting up that analysis to get up, to get out the positions of each of these entities. And we're going to print out just so we can see everything, the original text, the result of the analyzer, and then we're going to run the anonymization, which is just the replacement and print out those values. So here we are on uh, Jane's email. Here we are on the analyzer result. So you can see the email address, date, time, and person with the positions. And just notice how like for person, the start is zero and the end is four. And that makes sense because uh, the characters are indeed going here from positions at zero, one, two, three, four. I guess it's maybe including the comma or the apostrophe. And then the anonymized text is correctly replacing in Angie Henderson. It's replacing in the email and replacing in uh, the birthday here. Now, just one little small error, or not error, but kind of thing we would not, uh, we would prefer to see differently is here the email is Donald Garcia, which, um, you know, that doesn't strike me as the email that Angie Henderson uses. So this is maybe not ideal because sending this into the LLM, it probably won't cause an issue, but it's not going to be as obvious that this email really should be associated with that name. Now, there are ways that you could do this programmatically. So for example, you can specify the fake name to be female, but then you need to make sure that you're detecting a named entity that's going to be a uh, female. And actually the detection that Presidio uses just detects names. It doesn't detect whether it's a female or a male name. So you would need to detect the name, then maybe use a lookup table uh, for a list of all names and check whether that name is likely to be male or female. And based on that, you could decide to replace with a female or male name. So I'm saying, yeah, you can fix some of these issues. You could also decide then to um, put in maybe a female email address. But yeah, it becomes more complicated because to replace in an email here that's faked and that's going to be faked to match the name, that's going to be more difficult to do programmatically. And just uh, to show here the entity mapping. So we're mapping from Donald Garcia to Jane Doe. That'll help us reverse. And from Angie Henderson to Jane and from this date to this date. And notice how Angie Henderson is mapped to Jane. So if the language model just responds with something that says Angie, that won't necessarily be replaced. And you could probably programmatically set up replacements that will work with chunks of what the key is, but still that's an area where you can lose robustness. Now I want to simulate this end to end. So with this anonymized text, I want to uh, process it by a third-party language model. And the language model I'll use here is OpenAI. 
So I've entered my OpenAI key and I'm just going to send in the anonymized text and ask the language model to rewrite it a little differently. And this kind of simulates uh, what happens in a real case where your anonymized text will be changed a bit and we'll see if we can accurately de-anonymize it. So I'm sending in that response to GPT 3.5 Turbo, getting back the generated text, printing it out, and then I'm going to de-anonymize with my function. And here you can see the anonymized text going in, the response, which is just slightly rephrased, and then the de-anonymized. And the, this process is working for two out of three things. So I'm getting back from Angie Henderson to Jane because um, GPT responded with Angie Henderson, not just Angie. I'm getting back to the email, but I'm not getting back to the original date. And the reason I'm not getting back to the original date is because um, my mapping is not matching exactly. So if I go back up here and I check the mapping, the mapping is going from um, 71 to 92, but with the date in this format. And the format that it's actually presented in by the language model is no longer this uh, day, day, year, month, month, year, year. So it's not able to re um, revert back. Now you could put in some custom logic to try and cover some uh, different cases around, but it just gives you a sense of how it's not necessarily going to be robust when the format of the information can change. It's kind of hard to get the de-anonymization right. So I'll just show the full example here. Nothing new, but the original text, the anonymized text with the name, email, and uh, date replaced, what's sent to the LLM, what comes back, and then what's de-anonymized. So a score of two out of three here. And as I mentioned, you can, you can write some programs that will co cover some of these edge cases, and you can write those based on your specific use case. You can also turn on a fuzzy matching, which will allow you to grab slight misspellings. And that's something you can configure if you take a look at the Presidio documentation, I believe, for the analysis. Um, but you can also configure that in the custom functions you build for the de-anonymization. That's probably where the fuzzy matching is more relevant. I will note that there is um, a wrapper that Langchain has. It's called Reversible Presidio uh, Anonymization, I think. You can check out just Langchain and Presidio. And it, it allows you to reverse uh, the anonymization. It's basically a wrapper around uh, the custom functions that I built myself above here. All right. So we're going to take a look now at a different approach to doing this, which relies just on a local model. And of course, the drawback is you need to run the local model, which is going to add latency. And it also means you need to have some kind of GPU or maybe a Mac M1, 2, or 3. So I'm not saying this is trivial. It will kind of put a little bottleneck. But because the Phi 3 mini model is actually quite strong, you don't have to have all that much VRAM. So it may be interesting uh, for some use cases. And the way that this is going to work is by using the language model locally on the way out and the way back. So we'll anonymize using the language model on the way out and de-anonymize on the way back. So here I'm going to install um, all of these packages. Notably, I'm going to install outlines, which allows me to work with this model using structure generation. I'm enabling uh, fast downloads of weights and I make sure that I'm logged into OpenAI. I did log in earlier on, so that uh, should work fine. Now I've downloaded the model here. Um, if you're working on a GPU that has Ampere or later, I've got an L4, you can use flash attention. So that is an option if you want to load the model. I can probably try to just load the model here like that right now. Now there are two functions we need. We need to anonymize and then we need to de-anonymize. And in each case, we're going to be asking the help of the language model locally to do that for us. So let's take a look at how uh, we're going to set up that prompt. So we're going to say you're a data anonymization assistant. Your task is to replace, uh, identify and replace sensitive information with fake but realistic values. And you can see I've just got this tip here to use fake names of the same gender and region. So replace Jane with Mary or Pedro with Luis. You can see we have a one-shot example. So we provide a string of text that we want uh, the language model to extract entities from. We give uh, a sample result, which should have the original values and also the suggested replacement or faked values. So you can see here it's changing John Joe to Jim Jax, and it's changing the date um, slightly here, the year and the month and the day. 
And we're asking the language model to respond in JSON, which we're going to enforce uh, via the outlines package. And we're yeah going to inject here the actual text that we want to anonymize. That's what these uh, curly braces here mean. So just to summarize, we have the request, we've got a one-shot example, and then we have the actual instruction, including the actual string that we want to include. And the way we're going to enforce the output syntax is by defining uh, a pydantic model. And that model will have an original and replacement dictionary. And the dictionary, uh, as you'll see here, will contain name, then the string, email, date. So this is being enforced. And now we have two examples that we're going to try out. So we will define uh, the prompts as replace sensitive info with an input of uh, the text coming from the text array. And then we're going to generate an output from the LLM using outlines.generate. And this here is really just a wrapper around transformers, but it includes enforcement of the rejects. It in includes enforcement of the output. So with the generator uh, defined, we've got the results uh, coming by passing the prompts into the generator. And now we can basically use those results to do a replacement on the original text. And that's what's happening here. So taking the input text and the result, we're basically doing some swaps. So here you can see the replacement. We're doing replacements using uh, the help of the LLM's entity recognition. So let's just uh, take a quick look at that. And I'll note that you can run this um, using VLLM or using TGI. So if you have um, a CUDA GPU locally, I'd recommend running either VLLM or TGI. They both allow for structured generation, so you can generate uh, enforce that syntax on the output. If you're using a Mac, that's probably going to be a bit harder. I need to check. I'm not quite sure. Somebody can maybe comment if there's a way to use outlines with GGUF. I'd be surprised if there isn't. Um, but that is something that you need in order to get the performance that we're looking for here. Okay, so here we have the original text and you can see it's been swapped out. Uh, Ryan Cooper and by a fake. And Jane uh, is being replaced by Emily Brown. So this all looks good here. Now, next up, we will simulate the task with OpenAI simply by passing in the anonymized text and then asking for that to be written in a different way in the form of a sentence. And I've run this earlier, so the values are a bit different. But here you can see we're sending in anonymized text and then the language model, which is GPT 3.5, is just rephrasing it a little bit to give uh, this response here. And the same because I've run a second example is true for Linda Miles. Now, given these responses from the LLM, we want to de-anonymize them. So we need to set up a de-anonymizer. And the structure is quite similar. We have an instruction that this is a de-anonymization assistant. And uh, we've got an example for Jim Jacks here, where Jim Jacks is being de-anonymized with this mapping back to this correct answer here with John Doe. And following the one-shot example, we then have the output instructions and we inject the actual text to de-anonymize, and we inject the actual mappings that we want uh, to be used for that de-anonymization. And in the same way we replaced on the way out, we replace on the way back. So we swap out the fake values with the real values. So I've run this earlier, and you can see here the initial prompt, the anonymized going to James Duke, then uh, the rewritten is slightly reworded. Just notice how the date format changes. And then we go back uh, to the original here. And notice how this actually works perfectly. So John goes to James and back to John. The email goes back. And you see the language model is able to handle the change in format of the date, which was not uh, working well when we use something like Presidio. So basically, you're getting more robustness uh, in this case because the language model is more flexibly able to interpret uh, the fake names and the original names and accordingly replace them in a way that syntactically is giving better continuity. You can check out here as well the example for Jane going to Linda and back to Jane. And again, it's able to handle the issue of the date changing. So that's a quick overview of how you can use a local language model to anonymize on the way out. As I said, it is going to have more latency than using a Presidio type approach, which I'd recommend trying to get to work as a first cut. Now, I'm just showing here pretty short examples, so you'll need to test them out when you have much longer paragraphs of text and see if uh, the language model is able to withdraw all of the sensitive information or is maybe missing out on some values. 
Now, you probably could think of running a few different passes, maybe combining the two techniques. That might be a way, or even using uh, the language model as kind of a cleanup technique after doing some initial replacements. But hopefully, these two techniques give you a basis that will allow you to do some replacement and sanitization of your data before it goes to a third party LLM. And that's it for this overview on how you can anonymize the prompts that you're going to send to third party LLMs. You can find the scripts on trellis.com under the advanced infra section. If you want to purchase lifetime access to the repo, it contains uh, many other scripts from the historical videos here, including one you might want to check out again on data extraction. For now, let me know any of your comments below. And if you have any questions on this video, let me know your questions down below in the comments. Cheers.